Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna finish out our creation of this task section in our master detail page. A couple things we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to create a new page for when we open this plus button. We're also gonna need to work a little bit with dynamic actions, which is a big part of Apex we haven't really talked about yet. So you should get a little taste of that in this video. I also would like to go back through and work on the appearance here, get rid of that contact ID and default the date created for the notes. So lots of stuff. Let's get started and I hope you guys enjoy. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna edit page six and note that on the notes section, when we click that button, it's called pop notes right here. First thing I want to show you guys is that looking back at our page, for the notes section, the plus button appears right here, but for the task section, it defaulted to down here. So I'll show you guys how to change that first. So in the page designer, You'll notice that the button position is edit, so we just need to copy that for the tasks. So select that button down here, and we're gonna give this a new name as well. So we'll give this pop tasks, and the button position, we'll give it edit. It'll pop right there. Save that and do a refresh just to make sure it looks good. And you can see it's right here, so it looks good. When you click the plus, it still brings up the notes page, so I'll show you that how to change that now. Go back to the page designer. So select that tasks button here, and scroll down in behavior, you can see the target is page eight. So if you click that, and you can click this little list here by the page, you can see the options. And you can see it's notes. So what I wanna do is I wanna go make a duplicate of that where it's a little bit different for tasks. So what we need to do is we actually need to go to page eight. So you can put that right here, click go. And then under this plus, this little drop down arrow, select that and select page as copy. Copy this page, new page number is nine, and we're gonna give it a new name, we'll just give it tasks. Next, next, and next. So now what we can do is we can select notes and change this table name to tasks. Save that, go back, do a refresh. Now I wanna click this plus button and it's not changed, what in the world? Well, we created that duplicate page, but we didn't change what, what this plus button was referencing. So we'll quick edit on this page, select that button, scroll down just a little bit, and then for the target, we actually wanna change this to page nine, which is the tasks page. So that's the page we just created, and now we're making that button go to that page. So click OK, save, refresh, Click the plus and look at that. We got tasks, we got the contact ID, the message and the due date. So the appropriate information is showing up when we click that plus, so that's good. You'll notice that the contact ID is not filled in. Now we do wanna hide this eventually, but we do need the actual correct value to show up there so that we know everything's connected. Once everything's connected, then we can change that user interface. So this value for the contact ID is passed as a parameter, and that's gonna come from the master detail page. So what we wanna do is we want to edit this page and take a look at that button. So let's first look at the notes button, see what it's doing. When you scroll down in here, there's this behavior dropdown and under target, select page eight, and you can see it's passing the ID to this parameter P8 contact ID. So over on page eight, this value is made available to us. We need to do something similar for our button. So what we're gonna do is select that button, scroll down under behavior and choose page nine. And all we have to do is change this to P9. Click okay, save, and do a refresh. Clicking the plus button, you can see that the contact ID appears. So the benefit of duplicating a particular section is that it kind of gives us the setup we need. We just got to modify a couple of things, but the downside is you do have to know what to modify. So make sure you update that parameter there as well as the page that a particular button goes to. So when we duplicated this notes section to this task section, we got to update that button, create a new page and update that parameter. But as long as you know what to do, make sure you get every piece using the duplicate feature can be pretty handy. So let's give it a try. Let's go in here and add a message, choose a date and create. Now notice nothing happens. This is another thing we have to update. 
The notes section is doing a refresh when we add a new row. The task though is not refreshing. So it's still working. If we do a page refresh, you can see the value shows up there, but it requires a page refresh. So this is where dynamic actions come in. We want to do a dynamic action to refresh the section when we add a task. So you can quick edit this section here. That'll make sure you're in the right location on the right page. And then click this little lightning bolt here. These are the dynamic actions, which is similar in nature to what JavaScript might allow you to do with web pages. So you can see under dialog closed, we have refresh on dialog close. That's what's allowing the notes section to work. So let's take a look at this. You can see the region is notes and you can select refresh and you can see it's refreshing that notes region. So what I want to do is I actually want to duplicate this refresh on dialog close, right click duplicate. And we just need to update those. So the region is going to be the tasks and under the refresh, just change that to tasks, save that. Do a refresh. Let's try it out. We're going to go in here and add a new message. Choose a date and create. And it works. So the dynamic actions allow us to make our application more dynamic. We can choose what region can cause an effect and what regions to modify when that effect happens. And the absolute last thing I want to do in this video is update this to hide that contact ID. So we'll do it here. Select that. Under type, you can just select hidden. Just make sure you got that contact ID selected. Save. We'll do the same thing for the notes page. Select that contact ID and make this hidden. Save. Now going back to our original page, we can create some notes. Clicking that, you can see the ID is gone. But we can still go in here and add a note and it appears. So it's working. We can do it in here too create a task and it appears. Now for the tasks, the only other presentation change is I want that due date to default to today in the presentation here. So let's take a look at that. Have the date due column selected, scroll down to the default section and under type, you're going to put PL slash SQL expression and just put sys date, which will get the current date. Save that doing a refresh here. When we create one, you can see it defaults to today. As a conclusion, what we did is we basically copied this notes section and made it fully functional for the tasks. We talked about creating a new page that will show up when we click this plus button. We talked about how to get that ID to populate. We talked about how to hide the columns and we talked about how to default this date. So if it was too much, maybe go back, watch it again, make sure you got everything. But now that you understand all that information, your ability to create better applications should be a thing. So <laughs> thank you guys for watching. And what we're gonna be doing in the next video is, I'm not entirely sure, but whatever it is, it's gonna be awesome. So check it out.